the best January sure. in a long, long time, couple years. Do you think that momentum, maybe not to the level of that last month, because that would be unsustainable, but the positive stock right. momentum will continue? Yeah, I tend to lean that way, Sully. And the reason I do is, you know, we went into this earnings season and there was anticipation of, of what we had heard in the previous earnings uh, season, which was, hey, we don't really have any vision. Well, the interesting part has been we are seeing guidance. We are seeing vision towards the future in terms of some of these earnings. And I think that is the big tell. I mean, it seems as if a lot of these CEOs and obviously the rest of the C-suite has been able to determine, hey, we think we know what's kind of at least in front of us in terms of the trade war. Obviously, the Fed now moving off to the side, that's been helpful as well. So I think it's about trade and the fact that we are seeing better vision, whether it's the industrials, whether now this nice little lift you see out of these energy names, because obviously with oil sort of hovering above that 50 area and moving towards the mid-50s and, so, and such, you can see. Look at the reaction you're seeing today out of an XOM and a CVX and some of these various names that everybody's watching very closely, the big cap names. What are they doing? Well, you look at Boeing, it's skyrocketing to the upside as well. So a lot of these companies putting off a lot of cash and we're getting a little bit better vision in terms of guidance. And I think that's the big positive. You know, Lindsay, I want to go through some stats. We always say, you know, it's a big January, whatever. Check this out. OK, in January, the Russell 2000 up 11 and percent. The Fang stocks up 16 percent on average. The Nasdaq up 10 percent. The S&P 500 up 8 percent and 17 S&P 500 stocks gained more than 20 percent in January. What sounds, do you make of that? Can it continue? Sounds pretty good, right? It is. It's too good to be true, maybe? <laughs> well, you know, there's, there is the age-old adage that says, as January goes, so goes the rest of the year. It has a pretty good track record, 71% of the time. Just it not last is, year. Right? Yeah. Well, I was going to get to that. It, wasn't, it didn't happen in 2018. It didn't happen in 2014 or 2016 when the market was down in January and ended up at the end of the year. So, um, you know, while we are encouraged by the movement that we've seen in January, especially after the sharp sell-off in December, we think this is a nice time for investors maybe to take a pause, reevaluate where they sit, and see where they want to go throughout the rest of the year, because we do think volatility is going to remain a key um, characteristic of the market as we continue through the rest Josh, of the year. Josh, your take on the momentum? So at our wealth management firm, we talk to clients about events like this where you have just a disastrous December and then an incredible January. And it turns out that this is not at all out, out of the ordinary. There have been set 37 separate months going back to 1970 where the S&P has given you a better than 7% uh, return. This one's about 7.9%. Um, almost all of them have occurred uh, coming off of a bad month. So the average month preceding those is negative 0.7. Of uh, uh, negative 0.17. So, look, you got a really nice recovery. We have, uh, I think, corrected some of the damage done, and we've got a much more positive tone. And I think a lot of it has to do with earnings being really good, but it means nothing. So, when we explain this to clients, there is no follow through. Uh, the, the next month, on average, um, what can you really expect? It's about 1.2% gain, and only 62% of the time it's positive. 62% is the average of all months being positive. So th there's no follow-through based on just what we saw this month, just like November was a good month and December was terrible. So I think people need to take a step back, look at the big picture, and not try to figure out, oh, my God, this was a huge rally. That means February is going to be great. It just does not work that way statistically. I, I guess, Joe, let me ask it a different way, okay? We had... For the majority of last year, things were pretty good. I don't want to say euphoric, but they were okay. It was complete doom and gloom in December. Now we're back to almost a sense of euphoria. Is it just that one-off anomaly, weird December with a confluence of events, or is the risk of another December closer maybe than we think? Uh, listen, I, another December occurring, that could happen at any time. Um, I certainly I agree with Josh. I, I do think that we have changed the sentiment overall in the marketplace. And what's interesting about it is you've seen healing in all the pockets within the capital markets that the market was concerned about. You've seen the rise in oil. You had yesterday on January 31st, the end of the month, at the high yield market do a $34 billion volume equivalency. That's the highest volume activity the high yield market has seen since 2005. What does that tell you, Joe? So that tells you if you're seeing significant flows into high yield, to your point, to Josh's point, it is a more optimistic <clears throat> environment. Extrapolate that going forward, though. Does that mean that you're going to see consecutive months or, or, or quarters this year somewhat similar to January? No, I don't think you're going to see that. But certainly there has been a sentiment shift that is yeah. much better than what we witnessed in the Lindsay, there's another